Our story begins with Keed, our protagonist, who is talking to her friend Riza. The girl can't play with her due to her studies, but still recommends her the New World online game and leaves her to create her character while she studies. Kei can't refuse her friend's request, so she prepares her VR equipment and enters the game. Immediately, she names her character Maple, and since she dislikes pain, she chooses a shield as her main weapon. She also allocates all of her points to defense. This causes her character to walk very slowly when she enters the game. After asking for directions from a girl named Frederica, Maple goes to the forest to level up, where she encounters a bunny that can't do anything due to its high vitality. In the end, she kills it with her shield, gaining experience points and leveling up. Although she didn't want to kill it, the bunny provided her with experience points to improve her skills and as it's too late to change her choice, she once again invests all her points in defense to avoid getting hurt. Suddenly, a wild bee appears and attacks her, but it only tickles her until it eventually poisons her. She attempts a strategic retreat, but she is too slow. However, she realizes that she can become resistant to the poison if she lets herself be attacked. In this way, she tricks the bee who approach her, eventually killing it. This earns her more points, which once again go into defense, and she obtains a ring that restores her health. Due to her prolonged battles, she ends up falling asleep, unaware that a bunch of bugs have started to attack her. She wakes up after a while, realizing that this has allowed her to acquire the meditation skill, a healing ability that activates when she's under attack. After defeating the bugs, she considers her day finished and logs out. While she attends to her real-life tasks, she inadvertently becomes famous because she fell asleep in the middle of a monster attack. When she logs back in the next day, she notices that everyone is dressed much better than her. She seeks guidance from a squire named Kuromu, who explains that to get a shield like hers, she needs an artisan. He takes her to Eyes, a friend who crafted his shield, but Maple's dismayed to find that these shields are very expensive. Nevertheless, her new friends tell her that if she goes to the Poison Dragon's Labyrinth, she may find good rewards and to assist her. They give her some items and consumables. With her one functional brain cell, she ventures into the dungeon alone, encountering some slime she can't defeat until she uses her shield and acquires a new skill called Shield Attack. The girl continues her journey through the dungeon, defeating every enemy in her path, ultimately reaching the lair of the Poison Dragon. However, the dragon uses its venom to dissolve the girl's equipment. Despite her resistance, she can't endure the poison, so the only thing she can think of is to use the recovery potions she has to increase her resistance gradually. Although she comes close to death, she eventually achieves complete immunity to the poison, leaving both her and the dragon at a stalemate. She then begins to bite the dragon, eating it little by little until she finally defeats it. Thanks to a new skill, she also gains the dragon's powers. In the end, when she checks her rewards, she discovers a really cool set of equipment, and she proceeds to level up all her points into defense. Some time later, as she discusses the events with her friend without either of them noticing, the protagonist becomes increasingly popular. Some time later, the protagonist continues playing with her new equipment, devouring all the creatures that attack her and gaining the Devourer ability. While she plays, she can only hope that Riza will log in soon. The next day, they are on their way to school, discussing that the first New World Online event will be held soon something Risa knows is her friend's weakness. This only motivates her even more to finish her exams quickly. The event hour arrives and the game's mascot, Dorazu, presents the new scenario for the players where they will have a free-for-all battle. Since the protagonist isn't very good at attacking, she decides to wait for her first victim, a guy named Christmas Rose who tries to attack her, but is absorbed by her shield, just like everyone else who tries to attack her. Even those who don't touch the shield can't harm her because of her high defense. The protagonist, feeling surrounded, uses the dragon's poison she obtained earlier, managing to kill a large number of players. The downside is that she is ranked third in the event, and as you can get some points from the players you kill, many are hunting her, trying to defeat her. However, her defense and abilities make it very difficult for them to damage her. In the end, she finishes in third place. When she tells Risa about it, her friend is surprised that her absent-minded friend has come so far just by increasing her defense. Since she no longer has exams, she can play, but she doesn't want to choose something like a mage to avoid making her group generic. That's why she decides to be a swashbuckler, a player who evades enemy attacks to better fit the concept of being untouchable. That's how both friends log into the game shortly after, with Risa registering as Sally, since she's going to be a squashbuckler, she distributes her points, prioritizing agility. However, what's important now is the protagonist's shield. While she can defeat enemies, she can't acquire skills that require taking a hit. That's why she plans to ask Eyes for a white shield. But for that, she needs white fish scales from an underground lake. In this way, the girls set their first goal, but since the protagonist is very slow, the other girl carries her and runs, quickly reaching the location. Here, they start fishing, with Sally taking the lead, allowing her to collect several scales in a short time. Nevertheless, she also takes the opportunity to dive, finding an underground door. Upon returning to Maple, she gives her a bunch of white scales in exchange for her help someday. That's why she asks her to come back to the lake every day so that her diving skill improves, and she can explore the dungeon underwater. Maple agrees, and in the following days, both friends return to the lake over and over, 
allowing the swashbuckler to explore and map the area until her skills finally reach the maximum, and she has no choice but to take the risk and go after the boss. Sally descends into the dungeon, reaching the boss area where she gets a short breather. However, the monster quickly attacks her, and the battle begins. Although she manages to evade its attacks, the monster gradually depletes the dungeon's air, forcing her to play with increasing seriousness. At the last moment, she succeeds in beheading the monster. Due to playing seriously, she's exhausted, but in return, she obtains a very good set of equipment that will assist the protagonist in the upcoming event. Then it's announced that the next level will be added soon, a world as vast as the one they have now, which will also bring new monsters and adventures for them. Some time after this, the girls are discussing outside the game because the administrators have been releasing updates to prevent Maple from becoming too overpowered and to discourage everyone from abusing the tank role. They're adding weapons that penetrate defense and other things to nerf her. However, Maple gets excited when Sally mentions that with all these changes, she might feel more invincible in fighting. After reconnecting to the game, they decide to explore the areas they haven't visited yet. But first, they go to the skill shop, where Maple acquires Cover Move, which will allow her to protect her friend if she encounters any problems. Then, they go to a restaurant where they meet Dread, the second place winner in the previous event, and Drag, Frederica's friend who is ranked fifth. They tell them that another event is coming up soon, but even if they join forces, they can't compare to Pain, who is the first place winner in the event and the fastest to reach level 2 in the game. The girls, as they plan to explore other areas, ask for the boys' help, who send them to the Northern Forest. They mention that there's a mission at night to obtain the super speed ability, but they don't think girls like them can do it. At first, the girls don't understand why they're being discouraged, but that only gets them more excited. However, when they arrive at the forest, Sally becomes terrified as it's filled with ghosts and terrifying monsters. They seek refuge in an old house, which has a hidden basement where they find a man in distress. After healing the man several times, he finally rests in peace and grants them the ability they were seeking. With what they need in hand, Sally takes Maple to an old tree trunk that leads to a beautiful landscape with a brilliant sunset, where they find Red Mother of Pearls. They start playing around, and Sally hides from the girl where she wants to take her, saying that they need to wait until they reach level 2. Some time after their little adventure, they travel to the entrance of level 2, where they encounter several wild boars. Sally begins using her new skill with a protagonist called Mirage, which makes Maple's shield invisible. Once they reach the boss room, the battle begins immediately. However, the boss defends against their attacks with a magical circle activated by apples around the room. Although they manage to break through its defenses, Maple is stunned by an attack, leaving the rest of the work to her friend. With all of her powers and attacks, she defeats the boss, allowing them to advance to the next level. Upon arriving, they meet Eyes, who has prepared Maple's shield, naming it Shirayuki which is designed to increase her defense and vitality to better suit her playing style. Shortly after, Sally takes her friend to a different location, which appears to be a romantic spot. They are served a star-shaped drink and pieces of the sky. As they consume them, their hair and eyes sparkle like stars, and while they eat, they are delighted to have come so far together. Later, the time for the event arrives, and there they meet Kuromu, who introduces them to the Flame Emperors and their leader, Mi, who finished fourth in the last event. Dorazu appears, explaining that this time the event is to collect 300 silver medals, of which 10 are equivalent to one gold medal. Upon receiving one of these, they can exchange it for equipment or abilities. The event then begins, and meanwhile, the internet continues to follow the two players. The two friends, upon reaching the game area, find themselves in an extensive field, feeling excited about their first event as a team. They start exploring, but Maple quickly gets lost as she falls into a trap leading to an underground area. This area has a nearby boss door, so with that in mind, the two friends enter to try and defeat it. The boss appears out of nowhere and goes after Sally. It's at this moment that the protagonist uses her new ability, Cover Move, to swap places with the girl and avoid the attack. She also uses it to keep up with the boss and assist in defense. This is exploited by the other girl, who ultimately defeats the boss. After the battle, they claim two silver medals as rewards and head to their next destination, a snowy mountain, where they find Kuromu with his group, who were about to enter another zone but seem to be unable to go with more than one team. Since the protagonist still owes Kuromu for helping her when she started, she decides to leave the dungeon to him and his team as a token of gratitude. Of course, she won't complain if they end up winning. Sally doesn't mind either, and as they are about to decide where to go, they see the portal opening again, which means two things. Either the reward is right at the entrance, or an incredibly powerful monster wiped them out. This doesn't intimidate them, and they enter the dungeon immediately. Once inside, they encounter an Ice Burr, the boss of the area which the protagonist defends with her body since she can't use Devour with ice attacks. Stally also tries to attack while the protagonist covers her and uses her meditation to recover a bit, indicating that this boss is not like the ones they faced before, so they need to be serious about it. That's why every time the bird attacks, the protagonist stops it, but eventually her Devour skill runs out, and just when she's about to use the last one, the boss adopts a darker form, increasing its attack power to the point where it breaks her shield. 
Nevertheless, that doesn't stop her from continuing to cover Sally, giving her a chance to attack. They use the Mirage skill to confuse the monster, and at the last moment, they manage to use Maple's poison to finally defeat it, leaving them exhausted. Afterward, we learn that she survived due to gaining a new ability that allows her to survive an attack and be left with only 1 HP. Once they are healed, they collect the metals and some monster eggs that they can hatch into pets. In the end, they see they have several places to go after the battle, but meanwhile, some administrators are surprised to see that they defeated the boss of the zone. Although this took them by surprise, they are glad that the reward is nothing more than pets. However, it means more work for them as they need to find a way to nerf her. The girls, on the other hand, continue advancing through the game map, finding metals and hatching the eggs for their pets. In the end, Maple gets a turtle named Syrup, and Sally gets a dog named Oboro, both of which they can always carry with them and have them fight alongside. As they help their pets level up, they reach a desert and find some ruins where they are awaited by the sixth place player in the rankings, who wants to take the protagonist's gold medal from her. In this way, while Maple is still trying to understand the situation, the fifth-ranked player and her friend begin to fight using super speed, reaching the desert again and leaving the protagonist behind. She tries to use her powers to catch up to Sally, but Sally's mirage skill saves her and turns the tide in her favor. Later, the protagonist arrives running, falling to the ground in front of them, but that causes the stand to start swallowing them until they are taken to a dungeon where they are bound with binding chains, and if one of them dies, it will kill the others. Because of this, they propose a truce, and the fifth-ranked player introduces herself as Kasuni, exploring the dungeon with them and realizing that they are very nice people. When they reach a certain point, they encounter a giant snail, which is part of the dungeon's mechanics. They try to bypass it using super speed, but they end up at an impasse, where the only way out is a hole in the wall that is too high to reach. Nevertheless, Sally manages to jump, and with Kasumi's help, they escape the deadly trap. After thanking each other, they reach the end of the dungeon, where a treasure awaits them with a shield for Maple, weapons for Kasumi skills, and medals for Sally and Kasumi. In the end, the group exits the dungeon, and since they got along so well, they postpone the PvP for another time. They become friends in the game and bid farewell. Despite this, Sally is worried because they haven't been able to collect as many medals as they would like. Still, it doesn't deter them from continuing their search, exploring every corner of the map to find everything they can. Days later, Maple is playing with a boy named Kanaid who has no interest in the event as long as he has this cue, which is actually a staff. However, he doesn't tell them what it's for. Despite this, he becomes their friend, and as a thank you for their friendship, he gives them a small riddle to advance in the event, but he doesn't provide the answer since the fun is in discovering it on their own. In this way, they arrive at some ruins where, by filling some pools with liquid, they are transported to a marine area, encountering a giant squid as a boss. Initially, the boss takes no damage, but the protagonist poisons the water around it, easily defeating it and obtaining the medals. As both of them are transported to a beautiful marine landscape, the administrators continue to worry about their rapid growth and how Maple is becoming uncontrollable. Back with Maple, she and the other girl are aware that they will need to defeat other players to get medals. Sally knows she is better at PvP, so she leads her friend in charge of guarding the medals while she goes to get more. She realizes that she's really good at fighting, easily defeating many players. However, she only manages to get two medals after all that slaughter. Because of this, and with little time left in the event, she goes back to Maple, and they hide in a cave. Kasumi arrives sharing their hideout, and they stay hidden for the rest of the event. The protagonist, while being together, recognizes that she had a lot of fun exploring different places and meeting new people. Once the event ends, we see that Syrup has gained the Metamorphosis ability, which allows her to become gigantic. At the same time, Maple has acquired Psychokinesis, allowing her to fly on Syrup and generate poisonous rain. We then see our protagonist returning to the real world after being connected for a whole week. Her friend warns her to be careful as her Indian habits might surface. Although it seems like an exaggeration, she ends up acting just like she would in New World Online. So she takes three days off from the game to rest. When she returns, Sally tells her that during her absence, they added shining creatures to the game. Catching them allows you to use a building in the game as your home or base of operations. Since both of them want to get a house, they start searching, but all the good ones are either taken or expensive. They come across a very nice tree, which they end up claiming for themselves. Since it can accommodate 50 people, they decide to invite Kasumi and Kanad. They accept without hesitation, and while they talk, Eyes and Kurongu, who were gathering materials, also join without any problems. The group goes to the treehouse, which they love, and since Maple is the guild leader, they decide that she should be the one to welcome everyone and give it a name. That's how they christen it as the Maple Tree. Later, she, Eyes, and Kanad go to a mine to collect materials where she learns that Kanade's Q gives him a random ability each day and then initiates a fight with monsters. On the other hand, Koromu, Kasumi, and Sally are battling monsters in the forest, with Sally taking the lead, although she still can't harm Maple. This motivates their friends to join the battle because they don't want to disappoint their leader. After finishing their missions, the guild gathers again at Maple's tree, where they start planning their strategy. 
Kuromu updates them on the game's news. Apparently, the next two events are already in development with only a week left for the third one. The third level of the game is also close to opening. Since the difficulty increases with each event, they need to start recruiting due to their small number of members. Nobody opposes the idea, so Maple and Sally go in search of new recruits. They check the bulletin board, but no one convinces them, so they go to level 1 to find someone. Maple isn't concerned if they're weak, she just wants to have fun. They come across some girls who are discussing what to do in the game. Maple invites them to join her guild, even though they're beginners. The two friends take them to a cafe to chat, and here they introduce themselves as Yu and Mei, two girls who specialize in attack, just like the protagonist, although Sally advises them not to take her as an example. After both sisters agree, they end up joining the guild. Since they can't enter level 2 yet, Sally and Maple accompany them to defeat their first boss. Here, Sally has already faced it, she uses Oboro to create shadow clones and gain an advantage in their attacks, while Maple protects the girls from the boss of attacks. After the battle, they take the girls to Maple's tree, introducing them to the rest of the guild members who welcome them warmly. Even though the new recruits don't believe they are strong enough to be of help, a simple headbutt shows just how dangerous they can be. This makes Sally think that the girls are somewhat similar to Maple, which means that things will only get more fun from now on. Sometime after the girls join the guild, we see Maple taking them to the Poison Dragon's dungeon. She helps them move faster through a time trial challenge in which they use one of Maple's skills, using a poison capsule for transportation to complete it as quickly as possible. Despite their efforts, they can't finish the challenge in under three minutes, so they keep trying again and again until they succeed. With this method, the girls finally reach level 20, and they also obtain skills that allow them to use two-handed weapons with one hand and another that doubles their attack power. Since they have such great skills, they receive crystal hammers to maximize their attack even further, and the whole guild is surprised at how quickly they grow with Maple's help. Later on, everyone except Eyes and Kuromu is off on their own missions. To keep Kuromu involved, Maple assigns him a task, leaving Syrup in his care. While Kuromu is happy about it, he can't help but feel that the girl trusts the others too much, as he could easily steal Syrup and leave the guild if he wanted to. On the other hand, the sisters are practicing with Sally on how to fight effectively despite their low agility. Since she is such a skilled gamer, she plans to teach them highly effective gaming tactics for when she can assist them. On her side, Kasumi is obtaining wool from sheep using her shearing skill. However, she learns that Maple can now produce such wool and make it poisonous, creating a kind of harmful defense against enemies. Back with Kuromu, he and Syrup easily clear the dungeon, obtaining new equipment for him which allows him to go a little wild. Since everyone is leveling up, Maple is unsure of what to do. While she's out for a walk, she comes across an NPC who offers her a mission. In this mission, she must obtain a special item to save the NPC's sick daughter. Since Maple gets deeply involved in the story, she decides to accept the mission, taking the mother over a forest with syrup to get the needed spring water. However, she quickly realizes that this mission shouldn't be this easy, as the mother's dialogue hints that crossing the forest should be challenging. But it's no issue for her since they are flying. After giving the cure to the daughter, she remains sick, so they need a ring that Maple obtained in a previous mission. However, instead of healing her, the ring makes her go mad and flee the house. This is where the third part of the mission begins and they need to go find the daughter. They find her at an altar, where various spirits start attacking them. While the protagonist can defend herself, protecting the mother is challenging. Fortunately, the daughter stops attacking because the water she consumed helps her control the demon that possessed her. Now the daughter doesn't wake up, but the next clue of the mission tells them they need to get something from a church. At the church, they find a potion that cures the daughter, releasing an archangel that was protecting her. As a reward to Maple, the Archangel grants her the Sacrifice of Love skill. She quickly asks Eyes for a new set of equipment, and then shows her friends her new skill. With this skill, as long as she is alive, everyone within her range will have her same defense, making them invincible within her radius. On the other hand, Payne and his guildmates were discussing what to do with Maple. Although she is just a novice, she and her group have shown tremendous growth. Therefore, they decide that they must investigate them first if they want to confront or eliminate them. The day of the third event arrives, which involves searching for cows throughout the map and collecting rewards. Maple finds this challenging because she is very slow. However, the others are more interested in the outfits that Eyes has designed for them, making them all look cute and adorable, though Kasumi isn't very comfortable with that. The event begins and we see how everyone except the protagonist is managing to find and catch cows. They send her advice and encouragement to keep going, and even though she makes slow progress, her clumsiness causes her to fall down the mountain, unintentionally using up all her devour abilities for the day. After her fall, she stumbles upon a strange gear on a tree and decides to follow the forest path. She finds the church from her previous mission, and upon entering, she is greeted by a monster that tries to attack her. Thanks to her ability to create wool and syrup, she easily gains the upper hand. However, the demon manages to recover from the attack and extends multiple arms that take her into its stomach, trapping Maple. 
Since her friends are unaware of her situation, she has no choice but to resort to her trusted method of eating the demon from the inside out to escape, gaining new abilities in the process. Meanwhile, Mai and her guild are hunting a large number of cows using her power, though she doesn't seem very excited. Additionally, the administrators are aware that they need to keep an eye on Maple, as she continues to go out of control. After the event concludes, everyone gathers to see the guild ranking with Emperors of Flame and Holy Sword, the last one led by Pain, being the top guilds. Despite this, they don't let it bother them and decide to move on to level 3. Upon reaching the boss, Maple faces it alone using her Predator ability. She then uses Chaos Ren and finally, Atrocity, an ability that allows her to transform into a monstrous beast with increased attack and agility, easily defeating the boss. This new ability proves to be very useful as it boosts her attack and agility, and even as she runs out of health, she returns to normal. This confirms to everyone that Maple has finally ceased to be a normal human or at least a regular person. Upon reaching level 3, they quickly discover that it's a world filled with machines, so they can get a better understanding of it. Each of them takes a different path. In the midst of this, the protagonist encounters an old man who tells her a story. Long ago, the machine god created this city, but people wanted to understand how these machines worked, even though they didn't have screws or mechanisms. Then the second god, who apparently despises the first one, arrived. Now the protagonist's goal is to uncover the rest of the story. After hearing this tale, Maple begins heading towards the city center to investigate, but on the way, she and Syrup get lost and arrive at a place called the Cemetery of Dreams. Here, she encounters the Machine King, who reacts to the gear piece that the protagonist found earlier. The Machine King then mercilessly attacks her, but the protagonist doesn't give up and manages to stop him, receiving the gear piece in return. The King transforms into a more formidable version, and the protagonist activates the gear's ability, encasing herself in a mechanical suit of armor. She succeeds in defeating the new Machine King, but when she sees her reflection in a mirror, she can't believe what has just happened to her. That's why she calls all her friends to a remote location, where she quickly shows them her new gadgets, and once again, they are impressed by how strong their leader has become, as she has become the group's secret weapon. On the other hand, Payne and his group are still decimating monsters, but at the same time, they are somewhat worried about Maple. Later on, the girls go swimming, but in the meantime, Kasumi and Kuromu are hunting monsters to level up and not fall behind, while Eyes collects materials and Kanad makes preparations to play using his magical cube. The protagonist and the others leave the water, but as they do, Sally notices that someone has been observing them, it's Frederica, who wanted to gather information about them. That's why Sally suggests a duel, where if she wins, she'll get information about the Holy Sword and the Flame Emperors, but if she loses, she'll only get information about the latter. In the duel, Sally evades Frederica's attacks seemingly effortlessly, but in reality, she's much tougher than she appears, using all kinds of magical attacks to try and defeat her. Still, Sally manages to hold her own, even resorting to using new abilities she didn't expect to use against her. This gives her a chance to get closer, but Frederica surrenders before losing and tells her a bit about the Flame Emperors, revealing that there are some skilled players besides Mai. She quickly leaves the scene, knowing that whoever has the information controls the game and doesn't want Sally to learn more about her, which is why she surrendered. Shortly afterwards, Sally informs everyone that she actually used fake abilities she didn't have to confuse Frederica and make her information incorrect, ultimately to the other girls' team disadvantage. Later, they check the info of the new event, which will last five days. In this event, teams will now be classified by their number of members, and the goal is to protect an orb in a designated area. If they steal orbs from other teams or maintain control of their own orb for a certain amount of time, they will earn points. In other words, this time it's all about defense. This presents a challenge for Tree of Maple, because their guild is small, and they lack people for both offense and defense. They must also take turns guarding the base. For this reason, the sisters Yu and Mei and Kenai are assigned to the defense team along with Maple, whom they must keep hidden as much as possible. Eyes will stay at the base to provide support, and the rest of the members will be on the front line attacking other teams. In the following days, everyone does their best to improve and level up for effective teamwork. The time for the event arrives and Tree of Maple gathers at their base. The attack team goes out to confront other teams. Sally, playing solo, manages to put two teams against each other and even steals two orbs by herself. Meanwhile, the Holy Sword Order is defeating an opposing guild. On the other hand, Dredd is exploring the forest and quickly senses Sally's presence. They engage in a fast-paced battle, but Dredd soon departs as it was just a greeting. Simultaneously, Mei is taking on a group alone, and just before she can collect her orb, Sally steals it. When she loses sight of Sally and the orb, Mai becomes frustrated and cries like a child under the pressure of being the leader. We return to Tree of Maple, who are waiting for a team to enter their lair. Without any issues, they easily defeat all the opponents thanks to their teamwork. We continue with Pain, the leader of the Holy Sword Guild, who is single-handedly defeating a large number of players. Shortly after, we see that he has collected more than 20 orbs on his own, 
indicating that if he wanted, he could eliminate all guilds except one, Tree of Maple, whom he considers a threat. Back with Tree of Maple, as per the event's rules, the collected orbs return to their bases at night. Sally goes out to retrieve them again, but Kanan realizes that it's too much for her to handle alone. He, along with Karon, Eyes, and Kasumi, decides to help. Sally manages to obtain several orbs but ends up surrounded by enemy soldiers. At the same time, Eyes and Koromu are surrounded by a group of players. They appear to have killed Koromu, but in reality, one of his abilities allows him to survive and rejoin the battle, making him seem less and less human. Meanwhile, Shin, a member of the Flame Emperors, engages in a battle with Kasumi, who was initially targeted for recruitment by Shin, but was recruited by Maple first. Returning to Sally, she continues to face difficulties with the Holy Sword soldiers, especially when Frederica joins the fight. Despite the odds, she sends a message to Maple warning her that she might lose. However, she refuses to give up and uses her fake abilities to gain a slight advantage. Frederica catches on to this and manages to stop her. Just before Frederica can finish her off with a magical attack, Maple arrives at lightning speed to save her. She activates her machine power using it to eliminate all the enemy soldiers present, except for Frederica, who alerts Dread about this emergency. During this time, Dread was approaching the Tree of Maple's base and Yu and Mei immediately alerted the team about the impending attack. He goes all out against the sisters, and although they may not seem like a formidable force, the sisters work together exceptionally well, making it difficult for their opponent. However, Dread is no pushover either and continues to attack until he finally defeats both of them. The sisters apologize to their leader for failing in their defense. Maple arrives at that moment using her abilities to defend the area and ultimately defeating Dread, who threatens to attack them again. She is confident that they will defend as many times as necessary. Next, we see Kasumi continuing her battle with Shin, struggling with his ability to control multiple blades. However, she eventually manages to defeat him. In the end, the group gathers in their hideout, bringing together all the orbs they've collected. Sally knows that despite their significant advantage, it's time to move to Plan B. The revelation of Maple's true power is imminent. That's why she had been traveling all over the event area, to map out key points where their leader and the sisters would launch their attacks. Because she is completely exhausted, the protagonist and her friends head out to fight against the guilds, easily defeating everyone they encounter. After a while, they arrive at the Flame Emperor's location, where Marcus and Misery try to contain them using traps. However, the combination of Maple and the sisters makes them unstoppable. Just as they are about to finish off those two, Mai arrives, leveling the playing field and setting the stage for a major battle. As Mai arrives, she engages in a battle against Maple, showing that they are evenly matched. Both Mi and her friends start attacking relentlessly, and while the protagonist can handle the attacks without much trouble, her friends aren't as fortunate. Because of this, she orders her friends to retreat on Syrup since they need them as their secret weapon. In this way, the protagonist faces the other guild leader and the others alone, managing to defend herself thanks to her high defense and various abilities. Her Hydra and Poison attacks his sister in the battle, but both her opponents manage to contain her, at least enough to keep her at bay and prevent the poison from harming them. However, she knows that if she continues to take damage, she won't be able to endure it, so she uses a distraction to get closer and poison me. Upon realizing the formidable adversary she's up against, the other girl coordinates with her friends to use a special attack, forcing Maple to charge up the spell. Meanwhile, Marcus and Misery distract the protagonist, giving Mei enough time to activate the flame prison, which encloses the protagonist in a cage made of fire, continuously draining her HP. With no other options left, she decides to reveal her mechanical armament. With this, she manages to break free, terrifying the flame emperors. With this surprise, she launches an attack against them, and they can barely avoid getting injured due to the powerful rays from the protagonist. That's why Misery and Marcus suggest retreating since they now know her secret weapon. However, she doesn't let them go easily, attacking and eliminating them. Nevertheless, Mei survives and, determined to make the protagonist pay for this, she launches herself at her with the intention of self-destructing. But the protagonist also manages to overcome this. After reuniting with the sisters, they go after the Flame Emperor's orb, realizing they've taken it and flood with it. However, since there are several guilds in that area, they decide that they can go after their orbs to continue in the game. After winning and annihilating several guilds, they return to the team where they check the ranking board and despite playing hard, they are barely holding on to the 10th position. That's why they rotate the teams, leaving Maple with Kasumi and Koromu for the vanguard, Sally and the sisters to attack separately, and Eyes with Kanai to defend the orb. While this was happening, the players who had died checked the ranking board, wondering who would win or if Maple Tree would stay in the game. On the other hand, as Mike falls, the group reunites at their base discussing their next move. Although they are holding their own, their main problem now is Holy Sword. They know it's better to attack them while they are tired, and the protagonist's devourability is depleted, so it's likely they will attack that night. However, Payne is going after them right now and his friends, who share his opinion, will accompany him. They arrive quickly, only the four strongest players in the guild, as they aim to crush them with their strength, rather than their numbers. 
The battle begins and Payne faces Maple, proving to be a truly strong adversary, while the rest of Holy Sword attempts to go for the orb. Still, Maple Tree is a strong team as well. Despite this, Payne manages to overpower Maple and seriously wound her. However, thanks to her ability, she manages to survive with barely one HP, which forces her to play more defensively than usual. Her friends know she's in danger, so Aiz and Kanad try to go help her, but they are easily defeated. Sally and Kasumi are also defeated and held back by the rest of Holy Sword, leaving the protagonist alone unable to do more than defend herself. Pain then prepares his final attack, but she counters it with her counter ability, unleashing a powerful beam that even affects him. However, he also has the ability to survive with just one HP. That's why both of them activate their most powerful abilities, Pain his sword of the victor and Maple her atrocity, initiating a fiercer battle than before. Maple uses her newfound strength to trap him and finish him off to the surprise gaze of everyone, and then proceeds to defeat the entire Holy Sword group, winning the fight. This relieves everyone, but Maple can't undo the transformation because she can only use it once a day, and reversing it would be a waste. Since they won against Holy Sword, they reached the seventh place in the rankings, but there are three days left for the event to end. Their only viable option is to target other guilds, eliminating them so they can't get more orbs and surpass them. They take advantage of Maple's transformed state to easily defeat everyone, combining fear with teamwork. This takes all the other guilds by surprise since they had no idea she had such a devastating ability. On the other hand, Payne isn't upset about losing since he knows they'll be in the first place, but he plans to settle things with the protagonist someday. A soldier informs him of what she's doing, and he exclaims that things have become interesting. Meanwhile, the protagonist and the others observe a large-scale battle unfolding on the grounds of the Flame Emperors. They go to them, and since they are affected by their fight with Maple, they can barely control all the guilds attacking them. Even Mii knows they are in trouble, but their morale remains high and they decide to keep attacking. That's when Maple arrives in her monstrous form not to finish off Mii but to deal with their enemies. She knows she didn't do it willingly, but they still take advantage of it to regroup. It turns out that Maple Tree's idea is to eliminate the guilds by using the Flame Emperors, and they quickly realize that Holy Sword had the same idea. So Maple Tree starts helping them, using Sally's Mirage ability to increase the number of Maples in the area and easily decimate the enemy guilds. Soon, all players end up defeating the rivals, leaving only the top guilds in the game. This makes the administrators worried, wondering if they should nerf Maple again, but one of them is against it. They know she is the face of the game and motivates more players to progress and keep playing. Nerfing her would make them lose interest, so it's better to leave her alone, no matter how contradictory it may seem. Some time later, the guild gathers to celebrate the fourth event and for reaching third place in the last game. However, it's not just Maple Tree. Some members of rival teams whom Maple invited to celebrate are also present. While they eat and drink, they watch a broadcast that showcases the highlights of their guild and their best battles. Everyone is sure that in the next event, the protagonist will return with even more skills, even weirder ones. Although for her, playing like this is quite normal. Days later, Maple learns that the fourth level of the game is already available, so she calls her entire group to go after the entrance boss. They defeat it easily thanks to her and Kanade's help, so they enter the fourth level without any issues, discovering a beautiful nighttime city. To explore more easily, each member goes in a different direction, fulfilling their own objectives and missions. Maple seems to be having the most fun, or so it appears. Sally encounters Frederica, who wants to challenge her to a duel because she's tired of always being defeated with a single strike. Her goal is to land at least one hit on Sally to win. While they have their duel, the protagonist encounters Mii and follows her, discovering that she changes her skin and enters a place filled with cute animals. Here, the other guild leader explains that she acts so tough because when they started playing, everyone on her team looked up to her as their leader. She needed to maintain this persona to boost morale, but only Misery knows the truth and keeps it a secret for her. Maple does the same to avoid bothering the girl. This becomes evident when they leave because the Flame Emperors arrive and Mii is forced to resume her tough persona. Returning to Sally, she receives an attack from Frederica, or so it seems. She manages to defeat Frederica once again. However, she knows that despite using an ability, Frederica remains a formidable enemy. A week later, the group gathers to discuss their plans for the new level. However, Kasumi is more excited about collecting Japanese equipment and items, but she doesn't have enough money. She rushes to complete her last mission, which involves defeating a phantom sword. In the end, she succeeds and obtains the self-sufficient sword Yukari. She immediately tests it against some monsters, but although the sword is good, the skin it gives her is not suitable for combat, especially not for her. However, the worst part comes at the end of the battle when she discovers that the sword has transformed her into a At this moment, it's time for the sixth event in the game, where players are on their own, searching for rare items on the map. The protagonist is taken to a forest where monsters immediately surround her, prompting her to use her best tricks against them. After some time, she transforms into Atrocity and encounters Pain, who suggests that they team up so he can study her and make their way through the forest more easily. 
This disturbs the administrators since allowing them to team up would be a catastrophe. They decide to use the event to study Maple instead. As the duo explores the forest, the protagonist is impressed by Payne's speed. She in turn deals with the enemy she can, but she is quickly covered in a pile of honey, inducing altered states. She has to leave the rest of the work to him, and he demonstrates great skill by defeating the boss on his own. On the other hand, Sally obtains a new ability and one of the event's items. Meanwhile, Shin discovers Kasumi's secret in her lowly form. Days later, the protagonist is flying with Pain, who she introduces to her companions. Shortly after, we see that the guilds have gathered to celebrate Christmas, and as she requested, they save the event rewards for this day. Upon opening the rewards, they find that they are Christmas-themed items, although Maple is the only one who receives a reindeer costume. Sometime later, Maple Tree is battling a new boss together, facing some difficulties. However, Kasumi using her new sword helps them win the fight. Afterward, Kasumi ends up exposed to everyone, except Maple, as she fell ill on the opening day of the fifth level. Nevertheless, Maple returns shortly after. However, on that day, none of her friends can accompany her to defeat the entry-level boss except for Sally, who has to disconnect for something urgent. Thus, she is forced to go into battle alone. Upon reaching the boss's area, she realizes that the boss is very powerful and even at her maximum power. She struggles to defend herself, unable to understand how the others manage to defeat it. However, out of nowhere, she comes up with a self-destructive technique that allows her to win the battle. However, the boss takes her to its lair, admitting defeat and granting her the pandemonium ability. It's at this point that she realizes she's in the wrong place, not at the boss, to level up. While lamenting her mistake, members of the Holy Sword Guild arrive, assisting some newcomers in leveling up. The protagonist takes advantage of this opportunity. Since the newcomers cannot defeat the boss, she tests her new ability by summoning a large army of demons, with which she easily overwhelms her enemy. After leaving everyone in awe, she proceeds to the fifth level. One is above the clouds and involves a lot of bouncing. Upon arriving, she encounters the sisters who were defeated by a boss that uses thunder and lightning attacks. However, once they join forces with the protagonist, the boss becomes a piece of cake, and they acquire the ability to use thunder in their attacks, even though it's magic, and they cannot use it. On the other hand, the protagonist obtains the Celestial King's throne, which immobilizes her but provides her with several advantages, such as the ability to seal skills and recover HP. During this time, a notification arrives stating that the next level will be introduced the following week. As a result, she and the twins make the most of the time in this level until the day comes to battle the boss and advance to the sixth level of the game. The downside is that the sixth level has a horror theme, which Sally despises. She immediately disconnects when confronted with the theme. However, she quickly learns that there's a special team in this level that can make her more agile. So with all of her determination, she rejoins her guild and asks Maple for help to reach the objective, even though she still can't handle the fear of the setting. In the end, they arrive at an old haunted mansion. Upon seeing that her friend is still afraid, the protagonist forces her to enter using her mechanical armor. They begin exploring the mansion in search of the object or mission, but Sally can't keep her eyes open due to her overwhelming fear. Maple ends up defeating all the ghosts on her own. However, in doing so, they are both transported to random locations within the mansion, which terrifies the swashbuckler. She runs frantically throughout the mansion, fearing the ghosts. Unable to catch up with her friend, the protagonist transforms into atrocity and arrives to rescue her using her Celestial King's throne angelic powers. However, Sally, embarrassed by her fear, wants to leave the game because she can't handle the fear. At that moment, more players arrive, and the monsters start chasing them. This is their opportunity to escape, and she seizes it, racing away as fast as she can. Despite her fear, she manages to obtain the ability to connect with the underworld. After disconnecting from the game, Sally finds out that her parents aren't at home. Out of fear, she calls the protagonist to feel better and chat for a while until her parents return. The protagonist later on returns to the mansion, attempting to catch some ghost girls. However, due to her slow pace, she can barely keep up with them. Worse still, she gets caught in a slime trap. But this turns out to be an advantage as it allows her to capture the ghost girls by mixing her poison with the slime. However, this creates an error in the game. The administrators become concerned and realize that mixing slime and poison causes lag in the game, so they decide to correct it. Later, the protagonist meets Sally and gives her the boots she wanted so much. In return, she gives her a pendant that summons ghostly hands. Then she receives a message from me, inviting her to play with her, because she needs help defeating some very tough enemies. Maple agrees, and they go to a graveyard filled with fire creatures. Mi can't defeat them even with her flames, but the protagonist's power buys her enough time to charge her attack and obliterate the entire graveyard. After the battle, the protagonist takes the girl to a cafe, where they chat about how hard it is for Mi to maintain her tough and strong leader persona, and she feels somewhat regretful for creating such a character. Kasumi and Frederica arrive from a duel, as Sally can't handle level 6, and Frederica had to accept the duel on her behalf. The four of them engage in conversation about who will win the next event, and Frederica expresses her desire for a pet like the protagonist's, 
hoping to use it against Sally to defeat her. After their snack, Mai and Maple promise to me again, as the not-so-tough girl feels very comfortable around her, not having to pretend anymore. Days later, the seventh event arrives where the zones are divided by difficulty, and it's not possible to encounter other groups. However, they can do whatever they want in each zone. Sally and Maple decide to tackle the event together, and as they progress through the first floor, the swashbuckler discovers how the protagonist clears dungeons. Additionally, Maple's machine god has leveled up to level 2. Suddenly, they encounter the boss of the floor, who proves to be incredibly tough and resistant to physical attacks. However, Sally quickly figures out that its weakness is its mouth, so the guild master impulsively throws herself into the monster's mouth and unleashes her power, ultimately winning the battle. The administrators become irritated when they see Maple defeating yet another monster that was supposed to be very challenging. Nevertheless, the next boss is designed to pose difficulties for her. As they reach the second floor, the girls find a library where books steal Maple's abilities, leaving her with only a few skills and reducing her vitality by 2,000 points. Because of this, Sally takes the lead in attacking, managing to gain the upper hand against the books by coordinating with her friend to distract them and utilizing her new boots that allow her to walk in the air. Maple, however, struggles to defend herself. Sally ends up defeating the boss quickly, allowing them to pass the level. Although the administrators are frustrated with having lost to the girls, they are pleased to have given the protagonists some challenges. Later on, we see how both friends access a fire-themed level where the ground is damaging to them. The boss of the area appears, and Sally is unable to defeat it with ice attacks as it keeps changing forms. However, Maple takes care of it by using Atrocity. While they won again, the administrators manage to damage Maple by using the harmful ground. Since the girls progress without any problems to the next level, which is a water-themed one, they'd find that the boss of the area is nothing more than a giant turtle. As it doesn't seem very threatening, Maple suggests that they approach and ride it for a while. Sally finds this proposal strange but doesn't refuse. Meanwhile, the administrators are observing them closely, although they have faith that the turtle boss will be able to defeat them since it possesses a lot of power and defense. However, as always, the protagonist manages to defeat it without any issues. In the next level, as it is a horror-themed one, the swashbuckler is carried in the mouth of her friend's monster form. At the same time, the rest of the team fights their own monsters to complete the mission. On the other hand, the Holy Sword Guild is also completing its mission to advance, although Frederica is somewhat annoyed because she wants to surpass Sally. They then begin to fight the boss of the floor and defeat it without any problems, thanks to Pain. This allows the team to move on to the next level, and unbeknownst to anyone, Payne also admits that he hates losing, especially to the protagonist. We then see Mi, who is with her usual team. However, Marcus has grown tired of clearing so many traps, so they decide to take a break while resting. Mai wonders how far Maple has progressed. The protagonist's guild continues to make progress in now facing chameleons that induce sleep with their attacks. Although they don't have any problems, she's practically paralyzed by the sleep status until Sally saves her by defeating the Chainlands. They then reach the next level, where they encounter disappearing platforms and a giant rock that copies and reflects attacks. Despite the challenges, the protagonist manages to get on top of the rock and deliver a powerful attack, defeating it and advancing to the 10th and final floor. Here, they will face the most challenging boss created by the administrators. This becomes evident as soon as they enter the level and the battle begins. The boss is incredibly fast and powerful, to the point where not even Maple's attacks and defense can hold up. Despite her best efforts to protect her friend, the girl is overwhelmed by the boss, who unleashes a new attack. She attempts to intercept it using her atrocity form, but ends up severely damaged. She is forced to deactivate her love sacrifice skill and lets Sally take over the fight. In the meantime, the protagonist supports her from the rear, but the other girl is still unable to defeat the boss, who proves to be exceptionally resilient. In a desperate tactic, the protagonist immobilizes the boss and activates her self-destruct containing both herself and Sally to finally defeat the boss after a tough battle. The administrators are pleased that one of the bosses has finally posed a real challenge, even for the two friends. They have also made sure that the rewards for them do not break the game any further. Sometime later, when the entire guild completes the event, it's time to advance to the seventh level of the game. They discover that Sally can overcome this level by hiding in the protagonist's mouth. Maple Tree arrives at the next level, where they encounter a multitude of adorable creatures that excite the protagonist. Dorazu quickly explains to the guild that this new level has monsters designated to be pets. However, a special ring ensures that they can only adopt one monster at a time despite the various methods available. Due to these new rules, the guild's new objective is for all members to obtain a pet by the end of the day. Each member disperses and goes their own way to different biomes within the level, searching for a monster they like or completing missions to obtain one. Meanwhile, Maple accompanies the twins in search of their pets, discovering some cute little bears. However, due to their lack of agility, they go to Eyes for assistance, who provides them with special equipment for the task. 
The problem is that Eyes has run out of agility potions, so the protagonist as the guild leader decides to gather the ingredients while letting her friends explore the area on their own. However, the twins can't get the bears out of their heads and head to the forest to capture them without thinking twice. Meanwhile, Kasumi continues her mission, having to defeat several beasts and collect some luminous feathers. The twins, on the other hand, continue battling in the forest, easily dispatching the enemies they encounter along the way in a brutal yet adorable fashion. In the end, they manage to find the teddy bears but are attacked by an evil tree that defeats them. Maple, on her part, is still searching for the ingredients when a giant octopus drags her to the ocean depths, even after she activates Atrocity. Kasumi, on her mission, encounters a snake that paralyzes her, causing her to lose. The twins, on the other hand, continue to face the evil tree, gradually making progress in their battle. Eyes becomes increasingly concerned for the protagonist as she takes longer than expected. Meanwhile, Maple is being dragged deeper underwater by the octopus, eventually getting swallowed by it. However, she manages to escape the octopus's stomach, but finds herself craving for more when it tastes so good that she willingly returns to it. Kasumi, on the other hand, continues her fight against the snake, but quickly realizes that she cannot defeat it, not because it's strong, but because it's a guardian that cannot be defeated. This is confirmed when she passes through a hidden door leading to a smaller snake, which she adopts and names Haku. The twins, coordinating a powerful attack against the evil tree, manage to defeat it once and for all, finally claiming the teddy bears as their pets and naming them Yukimi and Tsukimi. As for the protagonist, after defeating the giant octopus by biting it, she returns to the guild with a changed eye and tentacles on one arm, the result of her new ability obtained from the boss. This, of course, leaves everyone surprised, though with Maple, surprises are becoming quite normal. The guild gathers again, observing how Maple has grown fond of and gained control over the tentacles. However, several of them still haven't found a suitable pet, so they are forced to continue with missions until they find something, determined to resolve this matter on the same day. That's why we see Kanad heading out to explore the area looking for a new event, mission, or character. So he arrives at an old empty house where there's nothing interesting at first, but he quickly finds a mirror slime. He goes after it reaching a crystal-filled cave where, once discovered, the slime attacks him by imitating him. Kaned manages to win the fight, and after meeting the requirements, he adopts it and names it Sue, discovering that it can mimic all his abilities and even his appearance, albeit at half the power. After forming a bond with the mirror slime, we move on to Eyes, who is searching for information on the bulletin board and comes across a mission involving a creature that no one has managed to tame so far. She goes to a blacksmith who assigns her the mission, which involves collecting various materials even unknown to her. However, this only excites her more and she eagerly accepts the task. Shortly afterward, she encounters Maple and Mi, who were about to level up but decide to accompany Eyes to a volcano to gather ingredients. Mi introduces them to Agnes, her phoenix, which quickly transports them to the volcano. While she collects the herbs and ingredients she needs, the girls start competing to see who can defeat more monsters, despite Mai struggling with the fire-based ones. However, the experience they gain makes the effort worthwhile. Meanwhile, Eyes continues her work without any issues. At the end of their little game, she rewards the two girls with potions she made herself, which leave the other guild master amazed. Seeing that the potions not only fully restore her but also increase her attack and magic, she realizes that not only Maple and Sally are true geniuses in the Maple Tree Guild. The group continues through the dungeon until they reach a lava lake from which a giant red dragon emerges. The protagonist faces the dragon using her tentacles, while Mi uses Agnes and Eyes' potions to strengthen herself and gain an advantage. Together, they defeat the boss and Eyes acquires her ingredient, while the Flame Emperor's guild master is impressed not only by Maple's tentacles, but also by how all the members of her guild are extraordinary. Although there are many places left to explore, the girls are not in a hurry and decide to accompany Eyes on her next mission. Meanwhile, Kuromu is in the final stage of his mission, where there are many monsters and terrifying creatures that Sally wouldn't like. After defeating them and reaching the end of the mission, he discovers that his pet is a small ghost with the ability to provide armor. On the other hand, Eyes has finished collecting everything she needed, so she goes to the blacksmith, who introduces her to an elemental named Fei, which becomes her pet. The guild gathers and everyone who was missing presents their pets. When it's Kuromu's turn, he proudly introduces Necro, his pet, which with its ability allows him to equip it as armor to further increase his resistance, making it a very cool ability. A while after these events, the protagonist and Sally are bored, but fortunately, Frederica arrives, challenging the swashbuckler to a duel. Knowing that she never learns, she immediately accepts, especially when she hears that Frederica has a new pet. However, this time when they fight, Sally goes all out against her, fearing that the girl might summon a terrifying monster that would scare her. Once they finish the duel, Frederica introduces Notes, her pet chick. Before she can boast any further, they receive a notification about the eighth event, which starts with preliminaries as survival challenge. Therefore, Frederica is called by pain to join him and not reveal anything to their enemies. Stally, on the other hand, is left thinking about Notes and what kind of pet it is. 
Since they want to go for a walk, she takes the protagonist exploring, this time riding horses to save time. They arrive at a beautiful spot in the level, where they play and take things easy, allowing a group of sheep to guide them through the map. However, the sheep get too excited and speed up so much that they end up by a lake, leaving them feeling dizzy. In this moment, they accidentally push the protagonist into the water because they got scared, prompting Sally to rescue her. The good thing is that while in the water, they discover something, a crystal-shaped key, and more importantly, one of the three keys needed for a hidden mission. The swashbuckler believes they can complete it by following the traveling animals. So they start searching in the water and Sally, following some fish, finds a map of level 7. She presents it to Kanaid and the others, hoping they can help them find something. Kanad, who has read all the library books, knows what they need to do and sends them to specific points on the map where they will find the keys. In the process, he also wins a game against the twins, showcasing his great intelligence. The two friends then go to a giant bird's nest, similar to one of the bosses they've already faced. Although they have improved, it is the protagonist who turns the bird into a chicken by unleashing all her power, easily defeating it and obtaining the second key for the mission. Shortly after, they go to an area in the sky with strong winds that keep blowing the protagonist away. Sally is initially left to deal with the boss alone, but in her frustration, the protagonist joins the fight, throwing everything she can. In the end, after they manage to defeat the boss and claim the last key for the mission, they go to some ruins where they are transported to a place full of monsters. Bulbaro guides them to a spring with strange water. Since their pets want to enter, they let them, and instantly see them evolve. They immediately go to inform the guild, but the others couldn't complete the mission. According to Kanade, it depends on the bond with the monsters and the time spent with them, which is why only Maple and Sally were able to complete it. Meanwhile, the administrators are still scratching their heads after seeing that Maple and Sally have become even stronger, especially when they realize that the next event will require even stronger monsters, as many players now have pets. After that, we see Maple playing with Syrup, helping him level up. Suddenly, the most important members of the Flame Emperors appear to show off their pets as it's only fair since they've seen hers and have confirmed that she has tentacles. The protagonist is very happy to see such cute animals, although they are not very friendly to strangers. After promising to secure victory in the next event, they leave and then the guild gathers. They learn that the next event is a survival preliminary test based on how many monsters you can kill before dying and some of them have surprise tricks when defeated. For this reason, everyone spends the following days training with their pets to strengthen them. So when the event comes, they'll all be well prepared. The protagonist ends up alone in some ruins and is attacked by a snake that she easily defeats. She continues her path, killing everything she encounters. However, at one point, she realizes that there are advantages and disadvantages due to the event's surprise tricks, and one of them causes monsters to flee from her, which is terrible for someone who moves slower than a tortoise. Nevertheless, her luck leads her to discover a trap that attracts monsters, and taking advantage of it, she defeats a large number of them. The worst part about this trap, however, is that it reveals her position to all the other players. On the other hand, Mei was finishing off some monsters until she encountered other players, who she easily dealt with, reuniting with her sister. At the same time, Ai sets traps with Fei, attracting many monsters and then detonating a large number of explosives, making it seem like they might blow up the entire forest. On the other hand, Kuromu is battling his own monsters alongside Necro, making use of his armored ability, which allows him to withstand many attacks. The twins, on the other hand, are searching for the protagonist, thinking she's in danger, but in reality, she's wreaking havoc on all the monsters. She's not the only one fighting as we see Kanaid facing Dragon Dread, who also have very powerful pets, putting the boy in a difficult situation since he can't escape from them, no matter how hard he tries. In the end, even with Sue's help, he gets killed, which Dread seems to find too easy, but he lets it pass. However, this was a ruse and Kanaid managed to survive thanks to Sue's abilities. Next, we see Kasumi, who is with Haku finishing off anyone who approaches their territory. Shortly after, everyone gathers to discuss the situation, and while Sally moves across the map, the protagonist is devoured by a giant creature. Meanwhile, a swashbuckler finds Mi and Pain facing off, using their pets. The boy has a little dragon named Ray, and both monsters prove to be very strong. However, Ignis has an advantage for Mi as it can fuse with her to give her more firepower, tipping the scales in her favor. The elephant in the room appears when the protagonist arrives, taming a giant crocodile which makes both Mai and Pain lose their desire to fight due to how ridiculous it looks. However, the protagonist can actually control the reptile, making it very efficient for hunting monsters without having to run. While all of this was happening, the administrators were receiving numerous complaints from players who didn't believe that everything was balanced. On the other hand, the Maple Tree Guild gathers to give themselves a final pep talk before the start of the next event. The time before the event arrives, and Dorazu explains that for surviving, they will receive five silver medals to be shared among the entire guild. They can earn more if they defeat strong monsters, but these appear at certain intervals, so not all of them count. 
That's why it's crucial to discuss whether they should split up or stay together to hunt more monsters. The event begins, and as soon as it starts, the entire guild is attacked by the first monsters. However, and don't have much trouble dealing with them because they are very strong, and Sue also helps by copying the abilities of others. In the end, the guild decides to split into two groups that will travel to different parts of the map. Sally is the one who knows the most about where to find unusual places, having mapped everything. Thanks to this, Maple and her group head to a preliminary test area, an island surrounded by monsters. Syrup demonstrates his potential by easily flying through this area. Upon reaching the small island, they are transported underground, where a slimy monster approaches them. Although defeating it doesn't prove too difficult, it regenerates upon death, duplicates itself, and uses roots from the ground to attack. They are forced to use Syrup defensively, but the sisters prepare their fire attack, which allows them to defeat the monsters and earn a silver medal. They inform the other team about this. Meanwhile, the other team travels through a forest until they encounter a ninja boss who continuously attacks them from hiding. Sal protects them from the projectiles. To defeat the boss quickly, Ives places explosives all around the area with the idea of finishing off the enemy swiftly. As the girl detonates the bombs, they defeat their opponent, who awards them their second silver medal. Due to their significant success, the group follows Sally's directions until they reach a large cave, where they begin setting up their base of operations for the event, starting to place traps with the help of Maple, the sisters, and Sally. Maple, on her part, tries to use her poison and other abilities to create a good trap, but her clumsiness accidentally activates the sisters' trap, causing the entire place to collapse and forcing them to start over. Meanwhile, Ives was finishing setting up the living room and had even managed to install cannons in case anyone managed to bypass their traps, surprising everyone when they arrive, especially since she didn't use any valuable materials. After everyone finishes their preparations, they marvel at the great fortress they've built but are also eager to put the traps to the test. They get their chance when the first wave of strong monsters arrives and is defeated by the traps. When Maple and Sally go to check, they miraculously find a monster still alive, but it dies shortly after. They then collect all the items dropped by the other monsters. Afterward, they rearm the traps, and the group relaxes and plays games. Meanwhile, the administrators are in agony as they see that Maple Tree has created a dungeon on their own even more challenging than anything they could have come up with. Nevertheless, they remain optimistic, because the event is just beginning, and there's still a chance that the group will face difficulties in overcoming it. The next day, everyone sets out to continue hunting monsters, or so they would like, but to their surprise, the sky is so cloudy that it appears to be nighttime. Even worse, they can't see the map or send messages. At that moment, they are all transported to different locations on the map, leaving them with no choice but to survive the waves of strong monsters. Sally is not worried about Maple, but rather about the sisters, who have little defense. In the midst of her battle, she encounters Frederica, who has an ability to detect her comrades. Before Frederica can boast about it, she sees the signal from Maple indicating that she should go find her on the beach. However, on her way, she runs into me and her group, who explain that the map is being consumed by darkness. She says her goodbyes and receives a special marker from Marcus. We then see Marcus and Eyes who are traversing a dungeon filled with monsters together. On the other hand, Karomu and Misery are supporting each other to defeat their enemies, with the boy using his ability to resist and act as a tank for them. Just before they run into trouble, Mai arrives to save them with Agnes taking them away from the danger zone. Like everyone else, he is not worried about Maple. Back with Eyes, she and Marcus were facing the dungeon boss, where she showcases her talent as a craftsperson by using all sorts of weapons and explosives to win, attracting everyone's attention with the explosion and making them find her. We then move on to Kasumi and Shin, who, like everyone else, were fighting numerous monsters, barely holding their own until the girl finishes them off. After being free from a barrier, they see Agnes approaching and are picked up. Meanwhile, the sisters are being protected by Kanade and Drag, who keep the monsters at bay, making the poor sisters feel useless. However, Kanai cheers them up by pointing out their good points. At that moment, Sally appears with Frederica, and upon realizing that the sacred sword can no longer use its base, she comes up with a crazy idea. She brings all the guilds she knows to Maple, and suggests they use her base for the rest of the event to facilitate the battles and continue playing. Of course, Maple agrees, which excites eyes because it means she can create more things. Upon arriving at the cave, the guilds start helping in any way they can to set up traps. Meanwhile, the administrators are having fun knowing that the event is very difficult and has claimed the lives of several players. The problem arises when they see the gameplay tactic adopted by the guilds gathering in Maple's dungeon. This means they have to send more powerful monsters to that area, but doing so would prioritize one area over the others, forcing them to make further adjustments to the game. The time for the monster wave arrives, and although the traps contain them well, May and Pain go out to destroy those that manage to get past, returning without any problems. However, they know that something like what happened in the morning might occur again, so they decide to explore other dungeons in search of metals. Maple joins them, 
and in this way the guilds split into teams with each going to a different location to cover more ground. Maple and her group travel with me on Ignis, a flying monster that saves them a lot of time. Meanwhile, the team that stayed in the cave to protect it knows they need to return the favor to Maple and can't rely solely on traps, so they decide to go out and fight the monsters. However, since they are novices, they quickly retreat to the hideout. On the other hand, the sisters travel with Marcus and Dredd, who take them to an underwater dungeon marked by Sally. Immediately, the boys use their abilities to go straight to the boss room without having to fight their way through. Arriving there, the sisters take the lead, using their long-range attack created by eyes to defeat the boss. Although the boss survives their initial assault, Marcus protects them, giving Dredd enough time to finish the battle. In this way, the group wins and each member receives a medal, completing the dungeon. We now turn to Payne and his team, who quickly arrive at an old mansion, which instantly leads them to the boss room. Thanks to their magical abilities and teamwork, they manage to overcome the boss without major issues, earning themselves the medals. Payne suggests that they continue searching for more as their team coordination is excellent. Next, we join Kasumi and her group where Shin uses his split sword ability to locate a dungeon, showing that abilities can be used in various ways just as he learned from Maple. Upon reaching the dungeon, they find themselves in a sand dune area where the boss is waiting for them. Initially, the boss doesn't seem like much of a challenge, but they quickly realize it's a tough opponent, forcing them to use their best abilities and magic. Kuroma uses Necro to reflect the boss's damage, giving the others a chance to finish the fight. This motivates them, and they decide to continue exploring dungeons to find more medals. Moving on to Maple and their remaining members, they are fighting against a large number of enemies emerging from a portal leading to the dungeon. To avoid getting damaged, they use the best-known method of transportation, the protagonist herself who catapults them at high speed into the portal. Once they arrive at the dungeon, they encounter a creature similar to Maple's atrocity, along with another equally dangerous and strange creature. The girls, including Maple, have serious trouble facing this thing and the protagonist ends up getting crushed by it due to its fierce attacks. However, the tentacles help her survive. It's then that Frederica buffs her and Sally, allowing their next attack to defeat the creature. At the end of the battle, all the groups return to their base, celebrating their victories. However, the administrators are concerned about their intelligent gaming tactics, as this means more overtime hours adjusting the difficulty and making new adjustments. But they quickly relax because on the third day of the event, more creatures like the ones the protagonist's group faced are released. Since they are too strong to be controlled by traps, she suggests that it's better to attack them head-on instead of just surviving. The guilds then hastily leave the cave, using the flying creatures they have to escape and reach a high ground area where they can take shelter. They also discover that the map has shrunk, forming the safe zone. It's at this moment that the boss of the third day appears, a horrifying and very large creature, so powerful that it can summon a meteor shower over a huge area, which Maple manages to defend against just in time. Since this is not an event to determine which guild is better, Everyone agrees when the protagonist asks for help for the weaker players, so all the guilds disperse, seeking to assist those in need. At the same time, Maple Tree, who are the slowest, plan to assault the largest boss because they have a chance to defeat it, or at least keep it in place. With this motivation, the entire guild goes to help the players who are still suffering from the boss's attacks, saving them at the last moment. Afterwards, they see how gigantic the boss is, but they come to the conclusion that its shiny parts are its weakness. With the help of the protagonist's atrocity and some clones, they begin to destroy the boss. It's not just the protagonist, the whole guild is doing their best, using their pets, abilities, and teamwork to weaken it, all going according to plan. The boss feels this damage and, as a result, shakes and emits a great deal of energy, forcing the protagonist to transform, and just when it's about to finish them off, Kanade and Sue save them all. However, the boss in the meantime escapes from them, perhaps to heal, after taking so much damage. Without anyone noticing, Sally and Maple remain on top of the monster, with the latter trying to aim and damage the wings so that it would fall to the ground. Sally, however, didn't hold up well in the air, forcing the protagonist to protect her. But even so, they didn't give up, attacking the beast wings even harder, and eventually, it fell to the ground. However, they also fell and were caught in a meteor shower. The other guilds, seeing that the protagonist had achieved her goal, launched a strong assault on the boss, unleashing all their attacks and pets in an effort to weaken it, or at least hold it back. Maple recovered and joined the attack with Syrup, along with the other guild leaders. However, while attempting to attack the boss with their best abilities, she found herself caught in an attack, causing concern for everyone. Fortunately, she survived but had very low HP. Sally approached her with her last bit of strength to give her a healing potion, leaving the final blow to her. Maple then took flight and launched herself at the boss using Devour, piercing through it like a missile and winning the event. The administrators, upon seeing this, couldn't believe it. It meant they had to continue making more and more adjustments, which would disrupt their schedules. But what was worse was that they became discouraged, thinking they were bad at their jobs. It was then that their boss, who had always seemed grumpy, revealed that they were great administrators and that thanks to them, many players had enjoyed New World Online. 
She promised to speak to her superiors to secure better pay and working conditions for them. On the other hand, after the event, Maple and Sally explore the other levels of the game, just like in the old days, unaware that other players had set their sights on them.